Question 23. You will be very happy to know that this is the last question under your investment appraisal, right? For Woki. So, and this question is mainly about your net present value and adjusted present value, NPV and APV. So, first let us read the requirement. Evaluate on financial grounds whether Fubuki company should proceed with the project. Whenever this type of question is given, it is either a net present value or adjusted present value. Right. Of course, when you have to find adjusted present value, you have to find the net present value there itself. The base case net present value is required. It could just be net present value or APV. We have both you have to calculate net present value and APV. Right. Whenever this type of question is there, evaluate on financial ground whether you should proceed with the project. You should go ahead with the investment. This type of question leads you to what? Net present value, adjusted present value. Okay. Coming to B. Discuss the appropriateness of the evaluation method used and explain any assumptions made in part A above. Whenever we have calculations, I've told you whenever we have to calculate a net present value or adjusted present value, there are tons of assumptions used. You have to now explain those assumptions made in part A above. Explain assumptions and appropriateness of the evaluation method. Evaluation method means how appropriate is the net present value or how appropriate is the adjusted present value for the, uh, to take this decision whether you should go with the project or not. And it's for eight marks. Four marks for the appropriateness of evaluation method. Other four marks are for your assumptions. So four here, four here. Okay. Now, let us read. So, Fubuki, an unlisted company. What is it? Unlisted company. Based in Megara. Okay. It's a country. Has been manufacturing electrical parts used in mobility vehicles for people with disabilities and elderly for many years. These parts are exported to various manufacturers worldwide, but at present, there are no local manufacturers of mobility vehicles in the country. Retailers in Megara normally import mobility vehicles and sell them at an average price of 4,000 each. Sell at this. They normally import. They don't manufacture. So Fubuki wants to manufacture mobility vehicles locally and believe that it can sell vehicles at an equivalent quality locally at a discount of. Sell at a discount of this to the, well, sorry, sorry, I just went up the page. Okay, to the current average retail price. That means what is the price? 4,000. On this, you are selling 37.5% discount. Although this is completely new venture for Fuboki, it will be in addition to the company's core business. Fuboki directors decide, expect to develop the project for a period of four years. Net present value, that means four years will be given. Time only, right? You have to find the cash flow. And then sell it for 16 million to a private equity firm. And then sell it for 16 million to a private equity firm. Then sell. Okay. Megara's government has been positive about the venture and has offered Fubuki a subsidized loan of up to 80% of the investment fund required. Okay. It clearly leads you to what subsidized loan and all APV. Okay, whenever this world comes, it is about not only net present value, APV. Subsidized loan of 80% of investment funds required. Okay. At a rate of we need the rate for the interest at the rate of what 200 basis point below Fubuki company's borrowing rate. Currently, Fubuki can borrow 300 basis point above the five year government debt rate. Can borrow at 300 basis point above five year government debt rate. Okay. Now, a feasibility study commissioned by directors at a cost of what? What was the cost? 250,000 has produced the following information. First, initial cost. Okay, so this is a project for four years. For cash flows, we need the initial cost. Initial cost of acquiring suitable premises will be how much? Initial cost 11 million. And the plant and machinery used in the manufacture will cost how much? 3 million. 
acquiring the premises and installing the machinery in a quick process and manufacturing can commence almost immediately it's important because this will tell you whether it is from year zero or whether it is from year one okay that they told that it will commence immediately means your starting point your starting cash flow is from year zero from year zero onwards you are having this cost okay now coming to point two it is expected that in the first year 1300 units will be manufactured and sold first year 1300 units sold unit sales will grow by 40 percent each of the next two years before falling to an annual growth rate of five percent for the final year that means for the fourth year it will be five percent but till then unit sales will grow at 40 percent each of the next two years each of the next two years means for year two and three Okay, for your two and three, it will be 40% before falling to an annual growth rate of 5% for final year. After the first year, the selling price per unit is expected to increase by 3% per year. After first year, selling price per unit increased by 3% per year. Okay, point three. In the first year, it is estimated that total direct labor, material, variable, overhead cost will be 1000 unit. This are your cost basically in the first year right so in the first year this are your cost material labor variable overhead cost you have to deduct from your sales to find your contribution because all these are variable cost if you see sales minus variable cost is contribution after the first year the direct costs are expected to increase by an annual inflation of eight percent direct cost after first year everything is after first year increase uh, inflation eight percent okay annual inflation that means annually you have to increase eight percent eight percent eight percent coming to point four annual fixed overhead cost would be 2.5 million of which 60 percent are centrally allocated overheads fixed overheads will increase by five percent per year after the first year so first year 2.5 on that five percent per year after the first year 60% are centrally allocated overheads. Coming to point five, Fubuki will need to make a work, make a working capital available of 15% of the anticipated sales revenue for the year. Working capital. Don't forget working capital. This is an area where most of the students struggle. 15% of anticipated sales for the year, the beginning of each year. The working capital is expected to be released at the end of, expected to be released at the end of fourth year when the project is sold. Okay. Fubuki is tax rate. Tax rate is 25% uh, per year on taxable profit. Tax is payable in the same year as when the profits are earned. So there is no confusion. Okay, there is no delay. Tax is paid in the same year as the profit is earned. Cool. Tax allowable depreciation is available. Tax allowable depreciation is another important area where you have to do workings. Whenever net present value is given, this thing will be there. Tax allowable depreciation will always be given to you. There is no question in the history of AFM where tax allowable depreciation has not been given when net present value is asked for so always 100 percent you have to be prepared for tax allowable depreciation working capital requirements all these things okay so tax allowable depreciation is available on plant and machinery on a straight line basis that's very good you don't have to do all this reducing it is anticipated that value attributed to plant and machine after four years is 400,000 of the price at which the project is sold No tax allowable depreciation is available on the premises. Okay. It is only for plant and machinery, by the way. And it's on a straight line basis. So we know what is the plant and machinery cost and divide it by four years because it's for four years project. Now, Fubki uses 8% as a discount rate for new projects, but feels that this rate may not be appropriate for this new type of investment. They're using discount rate for new projects. For the, your assumptions on all, you might have to say on your rates which you pick. Okay, it intends to raise the full amount of funds through debt and finance and take the advantage of the government's offer of a subsidized loan. It issue cost of 4% of the gross finance required. What is the issue cost? Right, all these are leading to your APV. That means you have to calculate this. Even though they are this from this question, it is not clear that what you have to calculate. How will you know? All these terms are there. Issue cost, subsidized loan. Borings are increasing. All these are the ways for you to indicate. This are giving you a hint, indication that you have to use adjusted present value. Okay. Sometimes if you are lucky, they will directly specify, calculate. But most of the time, it is not like that. So you have to be prepared. 
anything would be asked it can be used in the debt capacity available to companies equal to the actual amount of debt finance raised for the project that means there is no debt capacity they are not going to increase the debt capacity because they are assuming it has been utilized fully coming to the last para okay although no other companies produce mobility vehicles hazem a listed company now why hazem is given a listed company for you to find the cost of equity you are using that company's asset beta finding equity beta then cost of equity then vac you see that long process because you have to discount using that companies asset beta you have to discount your what project hey some listed company your company is not listed remember that when you talk about assumption that is another assumption you are, you are not listed by but you are using the listed companies uh, asset beta convert and regear and change it to yours right all this assumption so hazem a listed company produces electrical powered vehicles using similar technologies that are required for the mobility vehicles hazem's cost of equity is estimated to be 14% and it pays tax at so hazem's cost of equity is 14% and tax at 28% hazem has 15 million shares in issue trading at this and 40 million bonds trading at this right the five year government deal, uh, debt uh, yield is currently estimated at 4% 4.5% right this was the rate and the market risk premium is 4% so now coming to this you have to calculate adjusted present value for adjusted present value you have to calculate what your base case net present value then only you can calculate your adjusted present value so coming to this if you see okay let us read here first examine the steam comment is very important the computational element of a was done well you see it's done well that means you can score most of the marks in this section if you have uh, gone through it properly but common errors occurred when calculating working capital requirement common error okay errors for working capital requirement where many answers got the timing wrong the timing and when calculating the tax shield and value of subsidy for apv many candidates derived the cost of equity using geared and ungeared betas whereas using the modgalini and the miller's formula would have been less time consuming you have to use this formula to get the cost of equity you see not the normal gearing and ungearing beta answers that gain high marks in part b gave a detailed discussion of method used and explanation of assumptions made weak answers try to answer this part in brief note from and did not gain many marks many answers did not discuss the link between a p v and m mm. m this link is missed out you have to talk about it because when assumptions and all there are so many assumptions in mm theory and your apv is based on that theory only so whatever calculations you do under apv needs to be challenged you need to write about those points only for theory for your part b coming to market scheme i will not show you the market scheme right now i am just going to take you okay just go through the answer don't read anything don't try to do any calculation we'll do that later just see how long is the calc how many steps are there sales direct cost fixed cost tax allowance expenditure sale working capital base case and then we have all these workings just see how length is this all this are under workings only all this under workings and then we have this just see how many workings we have to get to apv six workings are there tax shield cost of equity the discount factor capital allowance cost sales working capital requirement all these are your workings okay now coming to part b appropriateness of the evaluation method and all these are assumptions just see how big it is that means when you study this topic how many hours do you have to put in this uh, topic for you to get full 17 marks how many hours just think about it all this does not come at ease answers like this in a perfect way the steps in the perfect order will only come to you if you practice and put hours of training for this type of calculations one after the other one after the other one of the then when you finally attempt a question on this adjusted present value 
speed will come to you you will know exactly what is this what are the steps required what is next what is next what is next you will finally lead it will lead to your answer so basically when you start with a question like this which is very big it's easy for you to get lost for you to lose the track you always have to keep in mind what is the end of this where do i want to reach what is the outcome for this question what do i want to achieve what do i want to calculate finally at the end to get that it's like i want to go from point a to b how do i go there right let me draw this okay it's very important this is point a and this is point b okay and i want to go from point a to b can i just jump or just i can go there will be so many obstacles there will be so many obstacles in between a to go from a to b it's like this is your final answer b is your final answer a you have just started for you to reach from a to b you have to get through all this all these points you have to connect and get then get there for that you have to know everything you have to know how to find cost of equity you have to know how to use mm uh, formula you have to know how to dis how to discount it how to find the base case net present value then you have to know how to uh, do the issue cost part the financing part when you are getting a subsidy the tax shield the uh, tax uh, tax allowable depreciation working capital requirement how to find my fixed cost how to find my variable cost how to find my sales all these things you need to know just just to get from point a to b so everything it's not an easy process it requires your time it also requires your energy your thinking energy you need to think after this what is next after everything has to be in a systematic way everything is in order when you study when you go through it looks too much you need to break this into pieces and do right so uh just give me 5 minutes and i'll be right back okay till then you just go through this working and try to understand right so that when i come you will understand it better and i can go faster right just 5 minutes
hello so I'm back I just had a glass of water right my I'm, I was thirsty I was feeling so thirsty because I am recording 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 okay so okay so first thing is you have to find your base case net present value that is your first step when you have to go for adjusted present value number one to find this base case net present value is basically you have to find net present value okay everything remains same till you come to the discount factor everything else remains the same till you come to the discount factor that is the only place of change which is not the same as normal net present value basically we are taking cost of equity there we are not taking back that is the only difference that's it so this discount factor is i will write here cost of equity because it is base case net present value we are assuming that it is fully financed by equity okay in discount factor we are using cost of equity that is the only difference the rest everything else remains same normal way only we have to calculate how we find for net present value so your first step how do you know what is your first step it is your sales order always start with the sales okay so now i am putting it 1.1 okay I'm not putting one because for base case net present value that is your first step I so I'm writing 1.1 under that word you have to find so 1.1 is your sales okay so 1.1 starting with sales okay okay so they are they are starting from 1 to 3 4 not starting from your 0 okay Again, I will just go through it because it was supposed to start from year zero, but then okay. According to the process, the machine quick process manufacturing can commence almost immediately. Okay, we'll see for the assumption why they're starting for one and zero, but right now we'll work it as it is the four, first four year, and if you see here always keep your working separate from your main table your working should not be there okay in the main table it should be separate and of course you should first do all your workings and keep it ready and then put it in the final table okay so first we are going to start with the sales sales unit into sales price okay so what are the sales unit 1300 one okay well, let's see the sales unit how much it was for this question i have to keep uh, referring back and all because i don't remember all the figure so it is told point number two it is expected that first year 1300 units okay unit sales will go by 40 percent for the next two years and then five percent so that means 1300 multiply by 1.4 you increase it by 40 percent you will get 1820 again increase this further by 40 percent you will get 2548 now increase it by only 5 percent 2675.4 but you can forget about that point and round it into whole number you can use the exact number also but it is easier to work when you are rounding up to the whole figure okay coming to the sales price increase it by 3000 3 percent each year right so that increase part you can do sales here first was 2500 we'll go and check the sales price okay It was 2500. Right? How are you getting that 2400 is? From the first para they told average price is 4000, selling at discount at 37.5. So that means it will be 4000 minus 37.5 into. 4000 
it is equal to 2500 that's how you're getting 2500 the selling price okay so 2500 increases every year by 3% that you will be able to do and then the sales revenue all these figures this four figures will go to your final table check whether it is so yes 3 to 5 4 6 8 okay it is point why is it point it is not 3250 it is 3.250 why all these are in millions that's why 3.250 means it is 3 million to 50000 right make sure because it's easy for you to get confused 1300 into 2500 it is you can uh, so basically they are eliminating the three zeros it will be like this if you are writing it as whole number that's why they are putting only 3.25 million because when you multiply 1300 by 2500 this is the number you should get but if you don't want to write it in thousands you can just write it like this 3.250 million because it is shorter also okay now coming to the second i will write it as 1.2 direct cost and it's working too if you see there's a working for that also okay so let's go to the working too this is how you should be able to go and go to the work and directly and find that answer your referencing should be very clear okay just w1 w is enough you don't have to write anything in front of the sales Coming to the cost, there's a note. Always read the tutorial note. Okay, remember that only specific fixed cost should be included in the net present value calculation. Allocated fixed costs are not relevant. Allocated fixed costs will go to the case study. Okay, now let us ask, go to point number four. Annual fixed overhead will be 2.5, of which 60% are centrally allocated overheads. Net present value only care about what? They don't care about the allocated overhead costs. It is eliminated, it is not there. Omit it. Okay, it's not relevant cost. For net present value, only specific fixed cost. Okay, because that investment is having, that fixed cost is having, only if you go for that investment, go ahead with that investment. That means when you calculate, so when you calculate net present value also, only that specific fixed cost for that investment will go centrally overhead fixed cost okay whether you go for that investment or not still it will be there it is unavoidable you cannot avoid it that's why it is not relevant okay so coming to the cost okay now what are the sales unit sales unit will be same just now you have calculated above okay from working one go up and see sales unit you don't have to calculate again same figure you can use direct unit cost that means unit into your cost okay eight percent increase per annum so every year you are going to increase it by eight percent but first year it is thousand two hundred okay we'll see how it is thousand two hundred if you go to point number three in the first year is estimated the total all this cost is thousand two hundred okay that's why it is 1200 so multiply 1300 by 200 you should get this million okay these are the total direct cost let me see whether direct and fixed cost knows fixed cost is different they are thinking different as working too early so specific fixed cost five percent increase per annum so increase one million by five percent one point like that you keep on increasing but first here is one million we'll see how Okay, we'll see that. Annual fixed overhead cost will be 2.5 million. Of the 60% are centrally allocated overheads. Okay, so since it is 60%, that means 40% of 2.5 okay 40 percent of 2.5 i'll write it here in front of uh, the the capital cost it will be 40 percent is not allocated of 2.5 which is 1 million which is 1 million that's why it is 1 million then you keep increasing it by five percent okay so if you take it here if you see working to working to okay specific fixed cost and direct cost you are taking separately 
okay and then it will be in bracket you are deducting it then after you deduct all this from sales it is your taxable cash flow this your taxable cash flow is not profit okay the name you have to give a name for it you will get marks for each it is taxable cash flows tax now on this you have to pay tax 25% Okay. Usually, what we do, tax allowable depreciation, we put add there and then again deduct it. But here we didn't do like that. Okay. Now, why is that? We'll see the assumptions. Okay, it will be given there in the assumptions. So, capital allowances. Next is capital allowances. It is coming in working number three, and it is zero point one six three for each year. Okay, we'll see how it, on a straight line basis. So not much work is required here. Capital allowance tax allowable depreciation available on plant and machine to rate of 25% straight line basis. Annual capital allowances will be. Okay. This 25% of tax is 25 3 minus 0 0.4 why 3 minus 0 0.4 so if you want to find the tax benefit on that 25 percent because that is the tax right let's see wait now capital allowance because go to that para where they have mentioned about it okay first point plant and machinery used in the manufacture will cost 3 million so the cost is 3 million okay from there you are getting that 3 million how are you getting that 0 0.4 it's not here Okay. Okay. So this, uh, it is anticipated that the value attributable to the plant and machine after four years is four hundred thousand, right? That means zero point four million at the price at which the project is sold. No taxable depreciation is available on premises. So that's why we are deducting from three million zero point four. That means four hundred thousand from three million. Okay, so the annual capital allowance 25%. Why 25%? Because it is the uh, same as uh, 3 minus 0 0.4 divided by 4 for 4 years. It is the same, right? 25% for 4 years. 25% or divide by 4 is the same only. You will get 0 0.65 only. Straight line basis, right? On this 25%, tax benefit is this per annum. Now, what is the tutorial not saying? You could have, you could also have assumed that the capital allowances were 0 0.75 in the first three years and 0 0.35 in the final year. You can gain full credit for this. Now, why are they saying this? That it could be 0 0.75 for the first three years and 0 0.35 in the final year. Okay, we'll see that later. Okay, so first the 0 0.163 capital allowances is deducted from this. Sorry, it is added. Then coming to your capital expenditure. Capital expenditure is 14 million. How? 11 from premises plus 3 plant and machinery. Point number 1. Then sale of project 16 million. Okay, so it is in the fourth year. Was it 16 million? Let's see.
okay second line uh Fobiki directors uh, express to develop the credit for a period of four years and then sell it for 16 million to a private equity firm so it is after four years 16 million that's why it does 16 thousand right it is 16.000 so it is 16 million it is not 16 thousand okay coming to the working capital working capital if you see working number four okay just just uh, give me some time i want to do that capital allowances part again i want to add and then deduct and see the effect Okay, we'll, we'll go do it later. So coming to the working capital, working for. Okay, tutorial note, it is only the extra working capital you got each year that should be included in MVP calculation. Do we attempt to include the full 15% of each year's sales as an annual working capital requirement. You should only include the difference between this year's working capital and that required for the next year. Okay, so that is your note working capital requirement. Now, what was the total sales revenue? This you can take from your sales revenue as it is, even from this table. If you see in the beginning, first line, okay. After that, 15% of the sales, so incremental working capital. So, the first year you can just take 15% of 3250. It will be 0 0.48. Eight okay, you have rounded up so incremental for the first year it will be zero only so that total amount is only the incremental working capital amount. Okay, so if you go and see first year, it will be the table 0 0.488 only. You are deducting it not from year one, from year zero. Okay, check the year because in the fourth year, finally, you are releasing it the working capital. So now Second year, when you do, what is 15% of uh, 4,687,000? It is this. But only the difference you are taking. Last year, you had a 0 0.488. This year, 0 0.703. How much it increased by this amount? So, only this you are taking. Here, they have written the years also. When you are coming to the third, 15% of this amount is this. So, the increase amount from here to here is this. Sorry, not here to here. This is incremental from here to here. How much it increased? This is the increased amount. And then when you're going to find the final year, sorry, the third year, the increase from here to here, which is this. So all this, the circle ones will go to your final table. And when, when you're coming to the fourth year, if you see the working capital is this 1.096. How are you getting it? It is this, the fourth year, 15% of that, the fourth year's working capital, right? There is another way of getting it. Just add all this, keep adding all this working capital. All the four working capital, the total has to be 1.096. That's how you get the total working capital, which has to be released in the end of the year. Coming to the net cash flow, you will be easy, you'll be able to calculate it and then coming to the discount factor, working five. The rest all you will be able to calculate and when you see that the base case is neg uh, positive but very small. Okay, let's go to the working capital. So 
So we assume that the un we assume that the ungeared cost of equity will be used to discount the project. Why ungeared cost of equity? Because this is not okay. We are assuming when we calculate the base case, uh, the project to be 100% equity financed. So in short, whenever this comes, adjusted present value. Okay, you have to use this method to find your cost of equity, ungeared cost of equity. Okay. Now, so this is the formula. This formula you can use only when you have to find adjusted present value. So this method app applies in adjusted present value situation. There are some other situations also where this method applies that will go for later. Okay. Coming to value of D. For each of this, okay, you need this, you need this part and this part and this part. Value of D, value of E, okay, cost of debt geared cost of equity all this you need then only you can find ungeared cost of equity so finding vd what is vd what was the value of the bond it was 40 million and what was the price this represents fraction of the power value at visit it is trading let us go to the bond part 40 million bonds trading at 94.88 per 100 that means it is 94.88 divided by 100 okay that's how you are getting 0.9488 that's how you are getting this into 40 so this is the vd now coming to ve v is what 15 million is trading at 2.53 it has been even in the case study just multiply and get this we are not told the ratio of vd to, VD to ee therefore we will assume that it is 1 why one just check the value of uh, d and e value of e is 37.95 value of d is 37.952 maybe that two is due to rounding but if you see it is very close so you can say one is to one one is to one okay so now we have the cost of geared equity 14 we'll see how Hazem's cost of equity is est uh, estimated to be 14%. Right? So that cost of equity you have to take. That is geared. Okay? So that 14 you have to take here. This only you have to find. KEI. Okay? And then you have to take the 1 minus T. Tax is 28%. So 1 minus 28 is 72%. Into KEI. This we don't know yet. We have to find that is cost of ungeared equity. KD just now we have found cost of debt is 4.5% into 1 because proportion of value of debt to equity is 1 only 4.5 okay 4.5 we have to find cost of debt okay last line 5 year garment deal is currently estimated at 4.5% and market risk premium at 4% that's why it is 4.5% cost of debt and when you find this you shall be able to make this your subject of equation and find this 10.02 percent so just say 10 percent okay so we are discounting it with 10 percent discount factor if you just see that all these are 10 percent rates okay and then discount factor and then you will get the base case is positive now all these are over now we are going moving ahead for adjusted present value you could also have estimated the discount rate by calculating the asset beat and then using that to calculate the cost of equity. The asset beat and then cost of equity. There's just not one way, but this way is easier and faster, simpler also. If you go by the asset beta, first you use asset beta, then you convert to equity beta, then you find cost of equity. It becomes a very tedious task. Wherever you can save time by using a simpler method, always go by that. But if you are more comfortable with this, the other way, asset beta and all, you can do that also. There is no harm, but make sure that the cost of equity you are getting is 10% in that, okay? Coming to the financing side effect. From this part onwards, okay? It is all adjusted present value. Your net present value is adjusted basically on your financing. So issue costs have been given 4% on the gross. Total finance required, which is the time zero project. Cash flow is this divided by 96%. Why? 
1 minus issue cost. How you are getting 14.488? Look at time zero. Whatever time zero amount you have, that is only the finance required. Time zero. It is this. This. This is the finance required. Initial investment, right? So that means to invest that you need finance. So that divide by 96. 1 minus issue cost. If it was, let's say, 92%, sorry, if the issue cost, let's say, issue cost was 5%, then it will be 100 minus 5, 95. Okay. So this is your finance side effect. Keep it. We are getting a subsidized loan. So there's a benefit for that. Okay. So the subsidized benefit of 2% is available on 80% of the project finance. How are they saying? Okay. 80% of the project finance, this is the finance, total finance out of the 80%. Out of that 2% is the subsidies benefit and needs to be multiplied by 1 minus the tax rate to capture the after tax effect. Of course, after tax effect, everything after tax effect. 1 minus the tax rate, 1 minus 25, 8%. Subs subsidy benefit will go and check. Okay. okay, so Fubuki is offered a subsidy so up to 80% of the investment fund required at a rate of 200 basis point below Fubuki's borrowing rate. Okay, so currently, how much they can borrow at 200 basis point below? Fubuki's borrowing rate. What is Fubuki's borrowing rate? 300 basis point above the five year government debt hill rate. Five year government debt rate is given here. It is 4.5%. Okay. So since it is 4.5%, 4.5%, you can borrow at above 300. That means 0 0.3. That means at 4.8%. Okay. That a rate required 200 below the borrowing rate. So for subsidies, it will be 200 minus 0 0.2. It will be 4.6 percent. There is something wrong here. Okay, we'll figure it out later. We'll figure it out later because this question I also didn't go through. Right now only I'm going through. So I haven't been prepared for it. Okay. The subsidy benefit 2%. Okay. So adjusted net present value, how do you calculate? Issue cost, it will be in bracket, 4% of this. That's the issue cost, okay? So first you divide it, 14.48 divided by this, 96, you are getting 15.092 on that 4%, that is the issue cost. Then comes the tax shield on debt, which is, working six because you are taking debt you are having some tax subsidy benefit is also there what is the subsidy benefit the total out of that only 80 percent and this is the subsidy benefit ta into 75 percent into this this 3.58 is the annuity factor for the four years because annually you are getting the subsidy benefit Okay, and then net benefit of financing side effect. What is it? This 0 0.707 is your base case net present value. You're adding it and you're getting your adjusted net present value. Now we are going to the tax shield. 
Before that, let's read the notes. When the side effect of financing are taken into consideration, project looks more attractive, net present value is less marginal, and project is likely to be accepted. You might have included the issue cost in the funds borrowed. This would still give you the full credit for marks. Tax shield. Okay. Okay. This is how we are getting that 2%. Okay, so there is a lot of working here. Tax shield. For we can borrow at 300 basis point above 5 year. That means 7.5. They are adding uh, 4.5 plus 3 percent. I thought we have to take 0 0.3, that's why I was getting okay. So it is 7.5. I'm sorry, it if it was 30 basis point, then it would be 0 0.3. So you see, this is the calc uh, mistake we, ca we all could do, so don't do that. Okay, I did this mistake just now. I took this as 0.3 percent. That's why I was getting 4.8 percent. But 300 basis point means 3 percent. So 3 percent you have to add with 4.5, which is 7.5. The government has offered Fubuki a subsidized loan of up to 80 percent of the funds required at a rate of 200 basis point below the borrowing rate. So borrowing rate is 7.5, below it is 5.5. So what is the difference? 7.5 minus 5.5. That's how you are getting that 2 percent benefit of subsidy. Okay. Now coming to the, that is not enough. We have to find the annual tax relief. So annual tax relief, subsidized loan and remainder of the loan. Subsidized loan is 80% only and remainder of the loan is this. But subsidized loan will get at this rate. Remainder of the loan will get at this rate at 25%. Because that is the, that is the what? Tax rate. Tax rate of Fobogi. Okay. So we have to take 25%. And then you add it. You need to discount this back. Discount it. For, what was the debt? The cost of debt? Discount at 4.5% debt for 4 years annuity factor. That means at 4.5% the annuity factor for the 4 years. Which is 3.5 edit. Okay. There's a tutorial note. So this is the present value only. And here, you are, this is 75% because after tax, 1 minus 25%. Okay. So now coming to the tutorial. Instead of using 4.5 to discount the tax relief, you can have used 7.5 as this is for because normal borrowing rate and replaces normal risk. You can use this rate also. You have to state your assumptions which rate you are using and why. Okay, so you can use both. Even 7.5, you will not be wrong. And then you are getting adjusted present value, which is more 1.491. That means based on this, you what what should you uh, suggest that they should accept the project. Now coming to Part B. Okay, before going to Part B, I want to take you to the marking scheme for Part A. Okay, so just go through part A only. Sales revenue direct cost additional fixed cost is 4 marks. Okay, incremental working capital 1 mark. Taxation 2 marks. Estimation of ungeared 2 marks. So all this looks very small 1 mark, 2 marks, but when you add up them together in aggregate, they make to a big total. So you cannot afford to miss any of it because these are easy marks. Net cash flows, present value, base case, two, two marks. That means all three has to be correct for you get, to get the two marks. Net cash flow, present value, and base case, net present value. It's linked. Issue cost, tax shield is two marks. Subsidy benefit impact, one mark. Next comes to adjusted present, uh, APB and conclusion. Coming to part B. Okay. Discussion of using APB. Two to three marks. Assumption about Hazem uh, as a proxy and MEM pro uh, proposition 2. Hazem as a proxy is 1 and this one. 3 to 4 marks. Highest mark is here. And other assumptions 2 to 3 marks. If we have something else. So now coming to part B. Appropriateness of the evaluation method. That means we have to talk about APB. How suitable it is. APB can be used. In the exam you can write APB. No need to write just a present value, you can write ABB. It is understood. 
ABB can be used when the impact of the debt financing is considerable. Impact of debt finance is considerable, that time APB is more suitable. As can be seen from the calculations above, refer to your calculations always. The side effect of debt financing are significant and are shown separately rather than being integrated into the cost of capital. You didn't integrate it into the cost of capital, you showed it separately. Base case net present value is marginal. But when the financing side effects are taken into consideration, project becomes much more acceptable. NPB is increased by more than 100% even after issue cost has been deducted. How you are saying 100%? Take 100% of this. What is your base case net present value? From here you can take 0 0.707. 100% means the full amount. Add this. You are getting 1.414. So even if you add 100%, this figure, this uh, is more than 1.414, it is 1.491. This are your assumptions. Make sure that this are your assumptions too. Some of the assumptions made in party above are quite general. Okay. Cash flows occur at the end of the year unless otherwise specified. Feasibility study is treated as a sunk cost. There was a feasibility study which was 250,000, which is not taken. It is a sunk cost. Sunk costs are not reliable, uh, relevant cost. Okay, where is it? This cost, this, this, 250,000. A feasible study commission, that is sunk cost. Okay, we have assumed that five year debt. Uh, Five year debt yield is equivalent to the risk free rate. Okay, fourth annual reinvestment needed on plant and machines equal to the tax allowable depreciation. The fourth, because of this fourth reason, I was saying that something somewhere is wrong because usually we add and then deduct tax allowable depreciation, but here we just did added, we didn't deduct it to find the Profit. Why is that? To, sorry to find the cash flow. Why is it that? Annual reinvestment. Because it is a reinvestment. It is a reinvestment. Annual reinvestment needed on plant and machine is equal, equal to the tax allowable depreciation. Right? If, if I take you to the cash flow again. If you see capital allowance this tax allowable depreciation has been added here for you to find the net cash flow reinvestment but it has not been deducted here from here to find the taxable cash flows it has not been deducted there because it has been assumed because of these assumptions. Okay, somewhere I think uh, we have been told about this. About tax allowable depreciation. We'll go to that point. Tax allowable depreciation. Okay, yes, I think it is this point. There's none of this point. But it has to be from this point only. No other way tax allowable depreciation has been mentioned about. Okay. okay, they haven't mentioned anything about like that, but it is just an assumption in this.
however other assumptions were made that were in the further discussion as you can see there are three okay initial working capital represents part of the funds borrowed but subsequent increments will be financed by the project itself company may not have the necessary funds at the start of the project it is very common to finance a working capital therefore it is reasonable to include the required amount of initial borrowings the required amount in the initial borrowings however the company should assess whether it is reasonable to expect the project to fund the incremental requirement as this uh, represent quite large amounts okay they should assess whether it is reasonable to expect the project to fund the incremental requirement so let us go to the working capital requirement if you see here working capital requirement just see in year zero we have taken working capital we have added that with capital expenditure that means our our initial investment this 14.48 also includes the working capital because it is common that in the first year you will not have fund so if you see the amount of working capital in the first year zero 0 0.488 it's quite large compared to the other years it's a quite a large amount right so because it's a large amount they are saying that it is reasonable to expect the project to fund the incremental requirement as this because it's a large amount it is quite expected that funds will be required for this incremental requirements coming to point two so main thing is about working capital right these are the common assumptions only when you calculate net present value working capital cost of equity or back okay Hazem's ungeared cost of equity is used as it is assumed to represent the business risk attributable to new venture is calculated in the assumption that Mott Gelly and Miller's proposition two holds based on the assumption that this holds. You have to link this with MM theory. So this is MM theory. Point three. This assumes that the ungeared cost of equity does not include financial distress costs, which may or may not be reasonable. It is difficult to determine accurate ungeared cost of equity in practice. And the figure used is based on a company in a similar but not identical. See, similar but not identical line of business to the new venture. However, it is likely that such approximations of the cost of capital are acceptable, given that the discount rate tends to be the least sensitive factor in investment appraisal. Okay, these are the points basically you can take for your assumptions. Also, when you also have to state assumptions, basically, assumptions are same only. It can be for cost of equity, for VAC, for uh, working capital requirements, for capital, uh, for uh, well, tax allowable depreciation. In all these areas, you need assumptions. So when you have to talk about assumptions, you can touch these areas. Okay, and they are saying that discount factor, you can accept this as it is. The cost of equity, the reason is discount factor is the least sensitive. Because of discount factor, the investment appraisal, there is not much change. It does not impact so much okay it is the least factor important sensitive factor is not very sensitive so the investment appraisal decision is not very sensitive to the change in discount rate compared to other things okay so that's it for this question and this is the last question with this i end accusation oh, sorry uh, part b investment appraisal I just have one word that is accusation and merger. Four questions are there. And after that, I'm done with whole division kit. I'll be touching on 50 marks question and then pass papers and mocks. And thank you all for seeing, watching my videos, liking it, commenting it, sharing with your friends. And I can see that all of you are working really hard, asking me questions. And I'm really happy to help you all. And inshallah, I will be helping you all. Do let me know if you have any particular questions because we are almost coming towards the end of it. So any particular area where you want me to make a video, a special video, maybe it could be any part of the syllabus. Maybe it could be reconstruction. But you have to be very specific. You cannot just say reconstruction or investment appraisal. That's a whole, it's a broad concept. You have to be very specific. Which area you want. Not a question. I will not be doing a question on it. 
but yeah maybe explanation theory concept and all i will make a video on that okay so do take care and don't forget to subscribe to my channel today do do it it does not cost you so much right it's just free so you can do it <laughs> take care god bless